Hello and welcome to the design overhaul series. I was asked to correct this simulation. If you don't know what is this, this is a gas hub with a built-in vent. One of our channel friends sent me his project file to look at and give some advice on how to make it better. So I've made some changes and turned it into this. So what we're gonna do is first I will create a base smoke sim and then after a period of time I will use path follow to guide the smoke to move along this path that I created here. Alright, let's start by refining this emitter a little bit. So there's no need to use a whole cylinder as an emitter. Although you use the vertex paint and these parts are totally black and will not cast any smoke, but I prefer to make everything clean. So I will convert it to an editable poly, delete these parts and then use retopology. So I will be able to paint it better and I need to limit the area that was emitting smoke so I will add a vertex paint make it all black and use white color to paint some areas okay I need to paint this area something like this as you see in the video, there was some uh, places that uh, it looks like the smoke is coming from two areas. So this one is enough, more than enough. We don't need to emit smoke from all over this place. Now I can switch to the Phoenix fire source. These are deleted. I will delete it. Okay. And first thing that cause the problem here is the huge amount of outbeam velocity for this kind of situations. As you remember in my previous tutorials, I will use a very low amount of outbeam velocities for mm, simulating, let's say, steam, the cup steam and something like that. So I will lower the outgoing velocity to a lower values like 10 and let me change the grid parameters so you'll see what I will do as we go. So close the output, go to the grid and I will increase the cell size so to something like this so our simulation will be much more faster and I will disable the adaptive grid because I just now need to see just the behavior of the smoke. So I can also decrease the size. Okay, if I hit the play, you can see our smoke is kind of stuck here. And the reason for that is we use the lower amount of, let's say, outgoing velocity. If I change it to 60 it will absolutely go up but it will stick with lower numbers and stop change other parameters you can see our friend here used keyframe to changing some parameter of the grid and it's related to let's go to the dynamic i guess the smoke dissipation and buoyancy yes you can see after a certain amount of time uh, the smoke uh, dissipation will increase and there will be no smoke buoyancy. I will delete all of this for now. The reason and that uh, our smoke is stuck here is the lower amount of smoke buoyancy. If I change it to 0.5 for example, it will be start to going up. I will change it to 0.9. All right. 
now there will be some subtle movement in this smoke let me stop it and change some parameters now it is better first to check all of the parameters for faster simulation because we now we're just uh, checking everything and we need to we need our simulation to be as fast as possible to check different parameters first i will decrease the quality here 80 is too much even for the final i will use 40 for the final simulation and i will just ch change the quality to something like 2 for the tests and uh, as you can see the resolution is a little too low i will increase the resolution by decreasing the cell size to something like 200 and the steps per frame i will change it to one let's restart the sim as you can see the simulation uh, will not start from the beginning because here it is set to 650 when i hit the play it will first need to stop it when i hit the play it will be played from 650 all right you can see when the smoke hit the uh, grid it will disappear and i will use this let's say function for the this vent area so when the steam hits this bottom part it will disappear and it will not bounce back to the scene all right so let's stop and fix other parameters all right let's grab the fire and check the settings here you change the outgoing velocity the noise is all right i will change it to two if you don't know what is noise check out the previous videos the smoke 0.5 i will change it to 1.3 because i tested and this number worked out and that's it all right i will change the smoke dissipation to 0.3 and uh, I will disable the classic vorticity, enable the massive vorticity, and if I show you the ducks on the KS website, you can see the difference between the classic and the massive one. It will have more details. I will put the link in the description for you to check that out. There will be some good information there. I will not use the randomize since i'm using the turbulence and i will change this uh, turbulence in the following the fluidity conservation i will set it to direct smooth i will stick to it and the transport i will change it from multi-pass to backtrace classic all right usually for steam i use these two combination direct smooth and backtrace classic the multi-pass will give us so many small details that are not suitable for this kind of situation and uh, in the fluidity the quality as i can show you here you can see the difference between the 8 and 200 quality as you can see the uh, smoke will act more natural as you increase the number and it will act more like fluid so we need to increase this number I will increase it to 40 for the final and for the steps per frame I will stick with one. Here I need to show you the difference between the steps per frame. You can see when you increase the steps per frame it will reduce the quality or the detail of the smoke. And it's written here for, for maximum detail it is best to use the lowest possible steps per frame. And since each additional steps kills fine details so be aware that if you increase the steps per frame the detail in your smoke will be reduced i will change the steps per frame to one and and that's it for the base uh, simulation let me decrease the resolution here all right now i need to introduce the pass follow to the sim okay we need to first change the grid uh, we can use the adaptive grid but I prefer to choose a fixed, let's say, grid for this one. Something like this. Change it to here. Increase. Do 
the size. Something like this. And I will put it here at the bottom of the vent. So when the smoke hit here, it will be disappeared. All right, let's delete the cache files. And uh, one of the problems was uh, this line is f really far from the smoke. So it will suck the smoke, it, it will attract the smoke. So we need to put it a little closer to the smoke. Like this. So when the smoke starts to hit it, it will easily follow the line. All right, this one has keyframe and after this period of time, it will reach to a certain amount of level, 200. I will increase the follow speed and decrease the pull speed. Let me show you. I will increase it. Let's first see, I will delete this. So and stick with the default values, hit the start. And you can see now the fire is attracting to the spline really easily. And since we are not using higher amount of outgoing velocity, the smoke can easily go to this direction. I will increase it to increase the speed to 800. If I decrease it to like, I don't know, 20, you can see the speed will be reduced. So higher numbers like 800 for this kind of situation works. So I will change it to 800. Let me show you what is pull speed. Pull is the amount of energy that pulling the smoke to the line. Lower values like 15 will increase the radius of the smoke. If you increase the value, it will really stick to the line. For example, 10,000. It will not go other directions, but if you decrease it to like something like 50, it will be going around the line. And you can also change the rotation speed, but 50 is all right here. Okay, let's stop. I will now open my final project. The turbulence here were too low. The 1.2 and 0.3 with this size will not work if I change to my final settings. Let's see the final settings. For the turbulence, I added a keyframe. So to this part, there will be no turbulence at all. Okay, and after that, there will be introduce turbulence so here you can see we have lots of turbulence in the smoke i used the 200 strengths with 200 millimeter size and for the small turbulence i used 15 millimeter and again 200 strengths let me grab this you can see from we start the simulation from frame 600 to 650. And after that, we started to introduce pass follow. So it will be attracted 
to the line. If you don't know how to add keyframe to the pass follow, I will create a, let's say, new pass follow to show you. All right, let's, let me just add 200 keyframes. So for example, I need to start my smoke to follow the path from frame 100. Okay. I enable the other key and when you enable the other key, whatever you change here, it will create two keyframes from frame zero to the selected keyframe that you are right now. If I change it to zero, you can see two keyframe will be added here. One with the 100 and it will be all the way down to zero that we've changed. So I will delete these 100, grab the keyframe, hit delete. Okay, now it's all set to zero. And now I need to, for example, enable the pass follow to the full strength in 20 keyframes. I will go to the 120, increase it to something like 100, and you can see it will be gradually increased to 100. So that's how we can use keyframe to set certain amount of parameters over the time. And that's it. After setting up everything, I increase the resolution to something about 10 million. And this is the final result. You can download the SIM file from the link in the description and you can see the parameters or you can maybe use it in your projects. And if you want me to create more of these tutorials, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and I will. See you in the next one.